15. Shall we get underway here with the actual work that we need to do? I'm going to share a page real fast. This is your work. This ICP led by Betsy and team is all that detailed work on the customer. We are going to be working today primarily from this toggle landing page content. And as we talk and work together, we're going to stand up a page. Now, I want to change. Last week, I asked you a question. How are we going to learn from this process? And we said three things by participating in the creation of the content by working through the build session that we did right there where we were working in MechLabs AI to get this content. And then you went away and refined and produced it. And funny, it's by creating a landing page right now. And if you watch, we are going to build a quality landing page in a short period of time. I want to get it to what I would call the 85 to 95% zone. And then offline, we can tighten it up, little spacing issues and critical pieces. But what I don't want it is in the almost zone where you really don't learn what we can do and not do. And I want Drew to show you any problems that come up even as we do this. You're looking presently at a mock-up of what we'll really have on the launch date. On the left side will be your new capability to remain in chat. And this will move all around your screen or your device. This interaction piece is that black left column and the right is the canvas. And on the canvas, you can build an ad or a landing page or other things. With this in mind, we're just going to pick one of these blueprints that have been pre-tested and use it as the foundation. So there you go. Now, as you probably know, if you've seen this before, all the colors and imagery are customizable and will change. Drew, show us the mobile. Scroll down to, this is the mobile version. And so whatever we build here, we'll go back in mobile and check it. And there's a, a way that we can optimize it for mobile. You should be familiar with that. Now, please click through to the methodology. Dhruv is showing you that beneath this is a step-by-step -step blueprint that lays out how the eight micro yeses on the left, they're in red, integrate with the page. And on the right, are the blue fast classes that you can watch in the resource tab if you were stuck on any place. Among our methodology to really prepare a page, there are three things I think you have to do. What is the first piece in our methodology? You just tell me. What are, what's the first framework we use? I see what? P. And what's that stand for? Initial customer, customer profile. profile. And the reason it's said initial deliberately is because with every pass of the data cycles that will come later, this gets tighter and tighter and more and more refined, more accurate. It's the initial customer profile that one day becomes your customer simulation, a theory actualized. The next piece that you need to be clear on is your customer first objective. And that's specific to your funnel. So for building a funnel, what is this funnel for? I'm not teaching this again, but you'll learn this again if you're in 200. And the third piece subsumes all the others to prepare a landing page, and that is the eight micro yes architecture. It has your value prop. The middle four yeses are all value prop. The top is headline, subheadline. Your evidentials are subsumed in those middle four. Explanation of what it is, the core factors that drive appeal, and the deep emphasis necessary for exclusivity. The last two micro yeses are your calls to action and getting them to complete the process. All right, so folks, this micro yes architecture links to your work. Drew, show us the work. This is the work. This is what you submitted. All right, gang, are you ready to start building a page with it? All right, so Mike, what's the headline on this page? Transform your marketing, okay. master AI with the Mech Labs AI Guild. You got it. And so you see our bullets, we got our sub headline. Drew, start building. So Drew's gonna use the template. He's picking on that button. Remember how he does this. And now he's going to name this. Let's call it Guild Landing Page. MechLabs AI Guild Landing Page V1. Drew, go ahead and pick your colors. I don't want you to miss that piece. And Drew's going to work in the background while we're talking as well. And Drew, can you just do this for a second? Yeah. Go over to the AI Guild Landing Page. Okay. Yeah. Control A. Control C, mm -hmm. paste it over here and ask Mech Labs AI how to improve exclusivity. Make sure you're talking to probably maybe marketing professor or conversion pro. And then you can go right back to the landing page, paste in that headline and keep working. 
MechLabs AI is going to start to answer that. Emphasize the selection criteria. Limited membership quota, how many? Membership spotlight and success stories. Invitation only events or content. It's beginning to think about ways we could bring more exclusivity to the funnel. Now, does this mean we're going to stop and not produce a page today until we get this all figured out? Who knows the answer to that golden question? No. That's right. Because we got to ship and get real traffic cycles. And whatever we missed, our customers are going to teach us. Whatever we didn't get right, if we listen real carefully in a good testing framework, we're going to discover it from our customers. And so I'm still getting answers over on the left about how to improve exclusivity. But Drew, as soon as you can, even if we have to approximate colors and fix them later, let's move on to where they can see construction. But explain to us what you're doing right there and why you're doing it. So what I did first is I went to MacLab's AI website and I happen to have a Chrome extension. It's called CSS Peeper. Essentially what it does is it makes it very easy for you to just grab some colors and like fonts that you're using for the page, et cetera, or any assets that are part of the page. So it allows you to kind of download these. So in case we need them, I'm just gathering them, collecting them and everything. Other tabs I have open is all the images that we have produced so far, the video that has been created, et cetera. So I can get everything available to me so I can start preparing, making the page all at once. Now, once you start branding, I'm going to start building a page. So get those fonts ready as soon as you can. And after he's chosen branding, let's put this on the clock and let's watch him build. And what he's going to build out right now is strictly limited to what you've already created, but we're going to talk and learn from it as we do. All right. We got a timer in place right now. And Drew is starting to build on his page. Bill, how, uh, Drew, how much longer before you got your fonts? I your got it. I'm just uh, wrapping up the brand colors. There we have it. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. And so here we go. Okay. Now, this that. means anytime you create a new page, you can just grab all these preferences, right? And change any, any one of the blueprints will reconfigure itself to meet our brand brand guidelines, correct? That is, that is correct, yes. Isn't it cool to see how the pieces start to drop into place? Where do you typically have a problem when you're working inside of a builder like this? You tell me, where do you get stuck most often? I don't know if, I, if, if this is stuck necessarily, but one thing that drives me crazy is when a builder forces you to manually reorder elements. Like if you're trying to insert something, above something else it doesn't just push everything down you have to like drag everything manually it drives you crazy yep that's an important thing i've seen it too one thing is i was just showing that new feature to flint today of something that we are wrapping up so you don't have to go through that oh cool that i saw the feature yeah right in the release that comes soon you'll be able to work on the left and cut and paste in the right but in the version after that, your work on the eight micro uses will show up on the page and you'll just edit or substitute out. It'll already be here in a draft version ready for you to refine. That's where we're headed, but it's quite a bit of work to get there. Um, I have a question. Um, I see that he's working on a Google Doc. And so that was just from research that was put into Mech Labs AI. And now he is copy and pasting all that into this page. But what I'm thinking I'm hearing you say is that what it will be is that we will ask the questions in Mech Labs AI to the left on the black here. And then we have the option to say, go ahead and load it onto the page to the right. Right. We okay. won't have that at launch, but we will have that thereafter. That's one of our next moves is completely connecting the pieces so that during your conversations, Mech Labs AI is hunting for the eight micro S's. And those eight will enable it to stand the page up for with answers already in place. And then you just refine it. Okay. All right, Drew, you're doing good. And we're getting ready to have a landing page. What's the most important thing you've learned in this exercise so far? Somebody tell me why Drew's getting the next star in place. Having yeah. everything prepared before you start. <laughs> All right. That makes it easier. People have different <laughs> work styles, but if you have the right stuff open, this thing can go pretty fast. Dude, Drew's like one of those cooking shows. You ever see those cooking shows where it looks so easy when they cook it? But, you know, the more they've got everything portioned out and it's all ready, and then they just turn around and here it's made. And, yeah, I love that, Michael. 
I don't think you're helping me out, Dan. Do you see sometimes you can work and work, but until you actually see it on the page, it's hard to truly visualize what it's going to look like. And sometimes that's when you realize, oh, I might need to shorten the text or I might need to do this or do that. I'm not saying we need to shorten the text, but there's only so far you can get it before you got to get it in a place where you can feel it. If you launch a landing page you can't feel, you're sort of missing out on an opportunity to gain from that whole process. So that you're sort of in here, you're producing value, and you're feeling that. And then the next time it's easier because the closer you can get to developing that intuitive feel, the stronger you're going to be. We use a map until we know the territory. Then we don't need the map. We just go there. All right. What else are we learning? I see you thinking. Any other thoughts? What's the biggest thing you've been you've been seeing in the last week of preparing for this? What else? The things uh, I have a problem with when you are working in the uh, desktop version uh -huh. and you lay everything out, formatting and uh, spacing, which is what Drew's working on now, when you move to the mobile version, you have to start all over again because the headline's too big and subheadline doesn't match the text below it. And there's differences. Now you have to go into the mobile site and edit. So that's one of the challenges I have in building pages. To answer that question, one of the things that we do automatically is, let's say you define your font sizes over here. Let's say I've set it to 60, right? On mobile, it automatically calculates the size of 60 pixels and reduces it down doing some calculation to make sure that it is still legible and visible and not overbearing on mobile devices. So what it does is, let's say I wrote this text, for example, right? And then if I have the mobile version on, it may look like it's distorted or it's out of the place. Right, but if right. you click on this button right over here that says auto arrange, it'll go uh -huh. ahead and fix everything for you very quickly. So there is a little bit of uh, AI that our engine uses that kind of allows you to kind of quickly make that happen and just auto range will kind of fix everything on the page very fast. It's one click just in case you run into these issues. It might just make it a bit easier for you in the future. Thanks, yeah. Drew. That's, that's very helpful. That's, that's pretty slick. And I'll add a video. Sometimes if a video does not work immediately, uh, we can always... so. My first attempt is going to be just copying this video URL and pasting that in here. And sometimes with Vimeo, it has a very unique embed code that it requires. So then I'll just use like the code element. And in here I can paste the code. One thing with the code element is anytime you use a custom code, you don't know what the height and the width of the code element is. So a good idea would always, and I saw that the video was tall, so I'll just make it tall for now and then quickly do a preview just to know how it will look like quickly. Okay, so it's it needs to be a bit taller so it fits properly, sorry. But at least we have a good idea of what we need to do. And then I can start adding more content while we are at it. So we have a three item, uh, thing uh, over here meaning three bullet list sideways i can just copy paste this i'll work on the formatting after i just want to bring all the content in all right what are you observing what are you thinking bill watching this what can we learn from what we're seeing well, it's great to have a template that follows an established and studied methodology. Once you get all your material together, which the team has done brilliantly, then it's it's easy. It's cut and paste, arrange, and call it good. Team, we're on the way. I'm grateful. I wouldn't let you go. Thank you for getting us this far. We are going to lock it all up.